Well, y'all, y'all ready? <clears throat> we ready? Y'all, thank you for coming. This is a this is another good news day in South Carolina. This is about the unemployment insurance trust fund. And as you know, businesses pay in money uh, during the year to provide for unemployment. Well, the tax rates are set according to a formula. And one of the things they're based on, of course, is economic growth and, and prosperity. And we last year we announced for the 2019 uh, year, calendar year, lowering the tax rates on businesses 18.8%, uh, which saves businesses about $52 million. That is, they're able to keep it and invest it and expand. Well, this year, because of a, a good economy, a lot of hard work, investment by a lot of people, a lot of businesses in South Carolina, we're announcing an even larger tax rate cut, and that is 34%. Last year was 18.8. This year is 34 percent, and that will <coughs> that will lower that rate, and uh, that's saving about 69.8 million dollars for the businesses of the state. Last year is 52. This year is 69.8. And unemployment rate is the lowest on record at 2.9 percent. And just as one quick example, a new employee will have a scale and a formula if businesses open or come into the state. Are created in the state. New employers start at a certain level, I think it's level 12, and last year they paid $121.80 per employee into this fund. This year they'll be paying $77 per employee. So that's the significance of this. It adds up and it's a great statement on the the prosperity we enjoy in South Carolina. We're doing a lot of things right. The competition is fierce among particularly the southern states, and this will yet give us another a good story to tell about South Carolina and another economic advantage, and that's good for everybody in South Carolina. Mr. Elsey. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My name is Dan Elsey. I'm the director of the Department of Employment and Workforce, and we certainly want to reiterate everything the governor said. He's right. The economy is strong. It's booming. It's done great things, and it's helping us out in uh, many, many ways. Uh, in addition to that unemployment rate of 2.9%, which is a record, we also have a record number of jobs, 2,341,000. And we've set a record every month this year so far. Uh, <clears throat> trust fund, as the governor said, uh, has been repaid. The debt has been brought back up to where it's supposed to be. And we did it in a way that saved $12.5 million in interest. <clears throat> So while everything looks good, uh, our job is not done. With a great economy like we've got, we inherit another issue, and that is employers saying, where are we going to get people to work? Where is our workforce coming from? Over the past six months, I've traveled throughout the state talking with local workforce development boards, chambers of commerce, small businesses, local workforce development boards, and every one of them have the same question. Where is our workforce going to uh, come from? Right now, 2.9% unemployment, that's wonderful, 64,000 posted jobs in the state. That is a testament to what our economy is doing, 64,000 posted open jobs across the board in the uh, state of South Carolina. That's an issue that our agency is focused on every day. Every day we in that agency talk about where are we going to get additional employees from to fill these jobs. <clears throat> We're looking at a number of things, some very creative, we think, may work, some may not. Uh, we're doing, we're looking to the rural areas as a source of employees. We're doing a different type of training as a pilot program in Fairfax, South Carolina with Scotsman Ice Machines, one of the finest employers in that part of the state. Uh, if it works, uh, we're gonna take it statewide and we think it'll be a major advantage to us in, in attempting to fill these uh, different jobs. The other source of employees we've got are people sitting on what the economists call the sidelines. In South Carolina, that's 1,635,000 people who are adult age, not incarcerated, but are not working and are not looking for work. Those people have incredible skills, many of them. Uh, many of them could come in and do the jobs that we need right off the bat. The question is, how do we get them to come off the sidelines and re-enter the workforce? We've got a pilot program. We're getting ready to start with an automotive parts producer in Spartanburg. 
uh, where we will be looking at flexible shifts, manufacturing facilities operating with flexible shifts on second shift. Uh, we've seen uh, Nephron Pharmaceuticals do it with a great deal of success here in uh, Columbia in a pharmaceutical setting. We're going to try the same thing in a uh, manufacturing setting. So the news is great. The economy is going good. Trust fund is in good shape. Employers are doing well, looking for employees. All that's good. Now, what we've got to do is find them employers, employees, and that's what we're focusing on 100%. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Governor McMaster, Director Elsey. Um, my name is Sarah Hazard. I'm President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. South Carolina is home to more than 5,000 manufacturing facilities operating across all 46 of our counties. Our industry employs more than 250,000 South Carolinians, representing 12% of our state's workforce. Today is a celebration that is over a decade in, in the making. It is an example of when government and business leaders work together, we can find solutions and our state can be stronger than ever. I am proud to have worked on this effort over the last 10 years alongside the governor's office, the legislature, and the Department of Employment and Workforce. We are pleased that the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund has now fully been rebuilt and are happy to see the resulting substantial rate decrease for businesses this coming year. Working together, South Carolina government, legislative and business leaders have developed a long-term sustainable solution that has brought stability to our state, our business community, and our workforce. This rebuilt system will lead to a reliably lower unemployment taxes while also providing a fiscally sound and sufficient reserve fund that will be there to protect our workforce during uncertain economic times. This successful collaboration we've seen over the past 10 years is just another example of why South Carolina is leading the nation in economic development and attracting world-class businesses. State leaders, state government, business leaders all coming together, that is Team South Carolina. On behalf of the state's manufacturing industry, I applaud Governor McMaster, Director Elsey, Chairman Alexander and our legislative leaders for working together with the state's business community to reach today's significant milestone. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ted Pitts, President and CEO of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. And today truly is a great day for business in South Carolina, and it's all business. Um, you don't have to think that far back. Um, less than a decade ago, the state owed the federal government a billion dollars. We had 11% unemployment, and you look at where we are today. The trust fund is almost a $2 billion swing. The trust fund is fully funded. Um, unemployment is at all-time lows, and it's a great day for business in South Carolina. When you look at where the business community is um, from 10 years ago to where we are today, it's great, and it's because of leadership. And I'll tell you that one change that Senator Alexander deserves a lot of credit for and others in the legislature is that the old Employment Security Commission is what got us into the hole and it had little accountability. It wasn't accountable to the governor. Um, but now with the Department of Employment and Workforce being a cabinet agency, being fully accountable to a governor, a governor that's business friendly, you see what we end up with. And I want to thank you, Governor. I want to thank Director Elsey and, um, and the legislature, Senator Alexander. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Governor. Uh, Thomas Alexander, State Senator, uh, Chair of the Senate uh, Labor, Commerce, and Industry Committee. And Governor, thank you for your leadership. Uh, and indeed, it's a great day for South Carolina. Mr. Elsie, we appreciate your direction there at the agency. It, it's, this is a day we've been looking for, uh, that we could come back and say after all we've gone through, as Ted mentioned, for the last 10 years and Sarah, um, to, to get to the day where we are uh, funded uh, going forward, uh, that we have a sound system, a solvent system here in South Carolina of the uh, uh, suit attacks. Uh, I want to really especially thank, though, the business community. Uh, without your involvement, without your leadership, uh, providing jobs to the citizens of South Carolina, we would not be here today. It is the money coming out of their pockets that have paid the debt and they have provided the opportunity now for us to have a sound system to meet the future needs. The greatest thing we can do under the leadership of uh, government masters to continue to make sure we have economic prosperity that we're creating jobs for our people. Uh, that is the, the greatest thing that we can celebrate today, keep our unemployment low, 
uh, so that we can make sure that South Carolinians are working across our state from, from the upstate of South Carolina to the coast. And workforce development, as Mr. Elsie mentioned, is, is going to be a foundation of that in the future. And I look forward to initiatives that will help make sure that we get uh, folks properly trained to meet the jobs that our uh, partners uh, are having here in South Carolina. So again, to the business community, we thank you for your commitment to South Carolina. We want to make sure that South Carolina is a great partner for you going forward, that you will continue to be competitive so that we have other great things to celebrate in South Carolina. But this is a big day for us today in South Carolina to have this system solved. Uh, and, and I'm great, grateful to the opportunity to governor to celebrate with you. And to, to all the folks in the legislature that were a part of this, it truly was a team effort, the House and the Senate, everybody came together in that reform that was mentioned earlier. And, and uh, I think that shows our commitment to making sure that we provide the type of environment uh, that South Carolina needs for our businesses and industries to be successful and provide the jobs for our people and our communities in all 46 of the counties. Thank you again, Governor. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your leadership too, Senator Alexander. Uh, as has been said, when businesses have confidence in the state and the people of the state and the government of the state and the rules, that's when they invest, that's when we expand, and when business is happy, everybody is happy. Uh, South Carolina is all about business. Without business growth and prosperity, all the other things that we seek to achieve will not be possible. So this is, a, this is a, an announcement that's taken a lot of work to get here over a lot of years. A lot of people have uh, done a lot of thinking. <clears throat> Businesses are growing. It's a good day, but uh, I will say that uh, this is a signal of what's yet to come, and the best is certainly yet to come. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, all, all of these things uh, from tax reform to education reform to law enforcement reform, all of those things fit together in an insep inseparable pieces of the same puzzle. So as we, as we learn more, as we determine the, the, the ways the economy is going with new technologies, with new businesses, uh, then we're able to adjust. And our, our job is to stay ahead of the, the other southern states, the seven southern states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, and Tennessee are really where most of the action is. That's where the sun shines. It's getting to be very simple. But uh, we, we are, are, are in a fierce competition with other state governments, county governments, because everybody's trying to do the same thing. But because of the kind of leadership and understanding that is reflected by this uh, today, we are, uh, we're in the game and we're, we're right at the top of it. And so we, we, will, we will keep going. Did you want to add something? Okay. Any more? Yes. In the uh, trust fund or in the, well, <coughs> the trust fund, of course, went under with the, uh, with the recession. We did not, at that point, have in place any triggers to really determine when problems were coming. Hopefully we have resolved that. We do have triggers in place now. We watch it every month. We look at what the trust fund balance is. Uh, <clears throat> the trust fund was rebuilt with uh, employers who were paying higher taxes than they're paying today. There have been seven straight cuts in the, uh, uh, in the uh, tax rate. In any event, so we started there. We've come back uh, to where we are today. We, as I said, monitor it daily and we will be ringing the bell if we see a problem because we're not going to head downhill without trying to do something about it again. More questions? Thank you very much. Everyone in here.